Doug uh, Gardner for a very special interview. How are you today, Doug? Uh, not too bad. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, not yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, so basically, for those of you who have watched um, Pure Own Inch and sort of followed Joel's exploits throughout acting and stuff, you'll know his characters all too well. But for anyone else who's tuned in and uh, doesn't actually know who Joel is, do you maybe you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Joel? Yeah, I, uh, I play uh, FPS Doug from the uh, TV and web series Pure Ownage. And uh, I guess most people will, will might recognize the, uh, the phrase boom headshot. And I've uh, been referred to as the boom headshot guy. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, but I'm also uh, known for other things. i got a podcast going right now and, uh, yeah, other acting. And uh... How did the uh, Stuck in the Middle of Somewhere podcast come about? Because I've listened to a few episodes of that, and it's quite a good show. Uh, sorry, what was that? How did the, the, the podcast come about? Uh, well, the podcast was uh, something me and my buddy Derek Sweet we're uh, sitting around, and it's it's been something what we've wanted to do for a while, and uh, the, I guess the name stuck in the middle of somewhere kind of comes about in terms of uh, you know nowadays people you know uh, the phrase stuck in the middle of nowhere people often use a lot in terms of you know just feeling uh, like there's there's where they are currently is is not the place to be and. Uh, there's always somewhere better, but uh, in this day and age, in terms of uh, you know the internet and and shit like that, uh, it's so easy to get stuff done. It doesn't really matter where you are anymore. And uh, yeah, it's kind of something that uh, me and Derek have been thinking about a lot. You know, in terms of trying to get other projects out there, and uh, you know, in terms of an act. I mean, in terms of acting, it's it's still. It's, it's not easy, you know, like Calgary's where I currently live, not exactly the best place to, uh, to kick an acting career off, you know, but uh, it's possible, you know, there's video auditions that you can always uh, mail in now, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot easier. On the, the topic of the web and how accessible it is, do you believe, I think I might have raised this question to Davin as well, do you believe that that's sort of the future of, I guess, television and uh media entertainment that everything will eventually be based off of the internet oh yeah without a doubt um it, it's happening right now like sony just released a uh, their internet television you know with it's integrated with google google tv i believe and uh yeah it's just, you don't need like right now i've got a i've got a computer box that's hooked up to my to my tv which uh pretty much you know that's where i watch all my television through yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I I really think that's that's the way it's going, without a doubt. How long do you think that would sort of be? I mean, obviously it's hard to spitball with technology. I right mean, I, you know, I think like ten years it'll be commonplace to have internet television in in almost every household. Sure, because I mean, even with uh, stuff like CBS and all that, and I mean, I watch a lot of American series and. Literally, as soon as the episode's aired on the television itself, they've already uploaded it to their website for um, oh, yeah. viewing. Yeah. Yeah, they're starting to catch on now that uh, not everybody is, wants to sit down in front of their TV at a certain time and deal with commercials and and all that kind of nonsense. I mean, uh, so sort of on that, that topic of both TV and web, Pure Ranage first started off as a web series. How did your involvement with that come about? Well, um, I mean, it's it's uh, I don't know, it's probably a story that a few people have heard before, but uh, me, Jeff, and Jarrett were were into film for years before uh, Pure Ownage ever got going, and uh, you know we had a little skit comedy troupe out here in Calgary, which we filmed a bunch of little short skits and and stuff like that, and we've done a sh few short films and. And uh, when, after the first one or two episodes kind of started building and started taking off, uh, they wanted to add new characters. And uh, it, I was just a, a logical choice for them when they were thinking about an, an FPS player because they knew I, <laughs> my love for video games was just as great as Jarrett's was. And uh, they knew I could capture the, the feel of an FPS guy pretty good and... So they asked if I wanted to do it, and yeah. 
there was real. sort of a um I don't know. There was always talk in the web series of how Jarrett or in the the show Jeremy played RTS and then you always played FPS. Is that uh, similar to how it is outside of the show? I mean, out of character. <laughs> Uh, uh, kind of, you know, like, I, I don't play just FPS, it's one of my main genres that I play, but I, I'm definitely the type of guy that uh, is always onto a new game every couple weeks, and um, Jarrett, on the other hand, he's pretty much strictly an RTS guy, he's, yeah, he doesn't uh, doesn't dabble in too much Xbox or, or anything like that, or, or WoW, or so yeah, he's pretty he's pretty hardcore RTS, that's for sure. And does he ever sort of try and ply that across to you? Uh what in what do you mean? Like uh does he ever try and sort of get you into the RTS basically? Uh no, I mean he's I, I actually love watching RTS. It's it's amazing and the skill it takes to to play the game is uh is definitely up there and I just personally, I just don't have the time uh, to get into an RTS. They're they're a type of game where you have to, you know, devote a lot of time to because they're very deep. Like a game like StarCraft Two, you have to know the ins and outs of every unit and every aspect of the game to be competitive. And I just don't have the time to to put into that. But I love watching it. Like like back uh, when Jared was really hardcore into. Uh, into uh, Command and Conquer Generals, I I watched him play hours of that game. Yeah, just just never got into it myself though, you know. Yeah, sure. Um, so I I noticed that you tweeted about it earlier on that the new um Black Ops map pack's coming out next month. Are you, <laughs> are you excited about that? Are you? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, that's one game that I've been playing since it since it came out. I love Black Ops. Uh, in fact, right before this interview, I was just uh, editing some Black Ops clips that I'm sure. going to be uploading here soon. But um, yeah, I love it. I think it's a uh, it's an incredible game. What's your thoughts on the the price raise? I mean, obviously the Call of Duty Four maps were I think 800 Microsoft points. And on computer, they were free. How do you feel about them sort of being 1,200 Microsoft points? Now? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, man. I guess if uh, the sheep will pay, why not? You know, and I unfortunately am one of those sheep that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that are buying right into it. It, Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It, it kind of sucks. And I guess companies are just trying to take as much advantage as, as they can. Yeah. Um, well, so that sort of relays into another question. One of the the listeners on the Pure Energy Forum sort of asked, what were some of your favorite games as a kid and did sort of any of the, the experiences as a child influence characters that you develop for shows later in life? Um, I mean, if, as a, growing up, uh, obviously the, the classics were when NES came out, Super Mario's, Super Mario Bros, you know, and... Uh, and games like that, and then as soon as N64 came out, GoldenEye <laughs> was a huge one for me. Uh, Is that what sort of hooked you on first-person shooters? I mean, obviously you said that. Yeah, to all be you honest, I, I think it was. You know, it. I, I, I never really played Doom or Duke Nukem or any of those other games or Wolfenstein. I wasn't a big PC guy until I don't know until until way late. You know, until. So, yeah, I guess uh, I'm. I'm tend to be honest. I'm still kind of uh, strictly a console guy. Yeah. I've never been a big uh, PC guy. I just I would, I'm not into upgrading my shit all the time and paying out the ass for it's an it. Expensive hobby, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and the the other question was sort of what influences characters that you develop for shows. I mean, namely, I mean, FPS Doug is a lot of the energy and excitement that you convey to that character is that how your character is sort of uh in real life uh, greatly exaggerated you know there, there's been moments where i've i've gotten upset you know playing video games but i never take it to the level that doug does yeah so you know it's just i guess it's I wish I could take it that level, you know. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you just want to let loose. I think one of my favorite stuff. scenes from the web series would have to be when Doug uh, takes the keyboard into the garage and starts smashing it and jumping on it. 
<laughs> my neighbor was actually outside during that take. Uh, that was one of my that was my parents' old house where we filmed that, and my neighbor was actually outside, unbeknown to me, and uh, we actually scared her quite a bit, <laughs> <laughs> and she never looked at me the same after uh, after that day. After you run out like a bit of a maniac. Yeah, uh, <laughs> screaming of obscenities. What was it like working on the on a, a real TV set after sort of? Doing the web series so independently was a, a very big adjustment, or was it easy to change to? It was. It was. Uh, oh, what's the word? I'm, it, it was night and day compared to the the web series. You know, the web series was just so guerrilla style, and we'd only work on skeleton scripts, and most of the scenes were improvised, and you know, we'd we just break out camera wherever we could. You know, whereas the TV show, you got you you woke up. Every morning, the transport was there to take you to the studio. You had your dailies with the script. You had your lines there. I mean, you could ad lib a bit, you know. With Jeff and Jared being in charge of the show, in charge of the show, that was one great thing about it is that you didn't always have to go buy the script. You could always, you know, venture from it. Was there a lot of leeway there? Uh, so, how much sort of give was there on either side? Oh, uh, it was amazing. Like uh, to work. To work on both, on both sets, web and TV show, uh, to work with Jeff and Jarrett was was great. They're always open to your ideas and and where you want, where you think the character should go or how he should react. And you know the way Jarrett Jarrett would write a script and then he'd give it to me and then I would perform it and you know he'd be like, "Whoa, that's definitely not how I pictured it, but it was it's so much better." You know, like the way you the way you did it. So it, yeah, it was it was awesome. I think uh, the TV series, though, uh, it was amazing. One of the best experiences of my life, that's for sure. Such an amazing crew, such nice people to work with, and yeah, they yeah I can't say enough about it. One of the things you mentioned was sort of the direction that you wanted characters to go. Obviously, the uh, I and a lot of the other fans felt that. Uh, your character FPS Doug on the TV series was handled a lot differently to the web series. Did you have any input on how that sort of turned out? Um, you know, there were talks about uh, how dumb, like, you know, Doug wasn't a, a smart guy to begin with, but uh, the TV show definitely kind of portrayed him to be slightly retarded almost, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, it, it, it was a fine line between how we want to portray gamers like as gamers we don't act like that and so were we bringing a bad light to gamers it it was kind of you know it was a discussion we had many times and uh but to be honest originally jeremy wasn't supposed to be a likable guy you know originally jeremy was was that asshole that you ran into yep. on the forums and and online and just that cocky prick, you know? And Jared Jared made him likable. Was that through so, his acting or more so uh, character changes that he said, "Look, guys, I want to take it in this way." I think both. I think it was a little both, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's once it started taking off. Of course, you don't want your your main character to be a prick that everybody hates. You know. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it was definitely a little bit of both. And there was also sort of a, a, a brief moment in a couple of episodes where uh, your character, FPS Doug, appeared to turn evil for a short amount of time. What did you like, like or hate that idea? <coughs> yeah, I was kind of disappointed it uh, didn't kind of carry out longer or it was it didn't really, you know, dive into that a little deeper. Um, I loved the idea of Doug going bad for at least a season or two, you know. Yep. Um, I was really looking forward to the kind of the character change in Doug. But when we started getting the negative feedback from it, they kind of made a decision to, you know, kind of stray away from that idea of turning Doug, you know, one of into one of Jeremy's nemesis. Yep. Did they, how long, was there a, a greater story arc planned of where Doug would be? Obviously you said that you'd like to would have gone for on long, uh, you would have liked for it to go on longer, but was there an actual planned arc where it did? I think, well, I think there were several arcs, you know, they, they, Jared and, and Jeff had 
uh, several ideas of where they wanted to take the show, and it uh, was kind of determined by the fans, episode to episode, of where it kind of went. You know what I mean? Like they had a, a couple ideas, and which ones they went with kind of depended on how fans were reacting. Sure. And um, did you have any input in that, or sort of uh, were you just doing the acting whilst they were handling the story, etc.? I mean, I would give my suggestions, but uh, I was never in any writing sessions like that, or, or you know. But uh, I definitely, like I said, there were skeleton scripts. You know, we we'd, they would have an idea of where we wanted to take a scene, and and it was record and go. You know. And by uh, I sp- throughout doing both the web series and the TV series, what was your? Uh, I don't know if you'd say favorite memory. Obviously, it was all probably enjoyable, but. Uh, what was sort of your favorite moment when doing that character of Doug? Ooh, um, I don't know. To be honest, I, I, I don't think anything really compares to the initial uh, explosion of Doug, you know, when that when that first video of Doug kind of went viral. Yeah. Um, I think that's when I realized, holy shit, this is this could actually be something, you know. So it's kind of hard to top that moment. But. Uh, are you pretty surprised by not just the character, but also the phrase, you know, the boom headshot phrase? Are you surprised at how big that's become now? I mean, I mean, there's even uh, an inclusion of it in Black Ops, I believe. Yeah, it was kind of funny when that first popped up on my screen. I gave, gave it a little chuckle, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it's kind of, it's just kind of integrated into gaming culture. And to be honest, I'm not even sure if the majority of people even know where it comes from anymore. You know, uh, and even a lot of people don't even know where where Doug comes from. Like a lot of people know who the Boom Headshot guy is and know who FPS Doug is, but don't know what Pure Onage is, which always kind of boggled my mind. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It def it definitely is. Eh, it's surreal, and it's still surreal. But it does. It just I don't know. It doesn't affect me as much. You know, like when I did see it in in Black Ops, it was kind of just like, oh yeah, that's that's cool. You know, but I wasn't freaking out about it or anything. Sure, and I don't know. Have you played Grand Theft Auto Four? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Is Brucey Brucey is did Rockstar actively say to you, "Look, we want to base this character around you," or is it a coincidence? No, no, I had no communication with Rockstar at all. I wish I did. I I would have loved to have played Brucey, but uh, (laughs) because the first time I even played that game, I just thought this is too coincidental to, (laughs) or this is you know too lifelike. uh, (laughs) I mean, there's even the the Team Fortress Two video sniper video. And uh, I've I've seen it in so many things, and I've never been contacted by anybody, or uh, yeah. So I what don't was, know. I mean, when you first played Grand Theft Auto 4, did you realize that, that that it was I mean loosely based around you, or did someone bring it up to you? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, one of my Derek, I think uh, the other guy on the on the podcast, I think he was one of the first people to bring it up with me, and uh, then I played it, and then. Within days of it coming out, I was getting emails and out the ass about, you know, is this is this you? Like a lot of people thought it was me that was doing the voice acting. It but, was uh, uh, pretty funny though. It was definitely <laughs> it was definitely cool to see. I mean, did you yeah, feel the yeah, same way? I don't I don't know if if it was a if it was a nod to my character. That's awesome. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, I can't I can't definitely say it was. <laughs> And I mean, you you were speaking about Derek. How long have you uh, known each other for? Uh, well, he's definitely part of the uh, the the originals. You know, like he's like me, Jeff, Jarrett. Uh, there's kind of a whole crew of friends that have known each other for years and years, like fifteen plus years. So yeah, it's just, as far as I know, it's it's been pretty much the majority of my life. Did he have any input on uh, either the web series or TV series? He wasn't involved with that. No, no, not at all. Derek, uh, Derek's always had his own thing going. You know, he's a he's a stand-up comedian, and he's had a few uh, web comics that he used to do, and he's always kind of had his own thing going on. And sort of after doing the the TV series, mainly, had, I obviously you said before that you do other acting stuff. Has that opened up any other opportunities for you? Surprisingly, no. Uh, you would think that being a lead on a, a TV series would would open up a lot of opportunities, but uh, 
to be honest, in Canada, there's not a lot of cool shit, you know, to be doing up here. Like, the majority of movies uh, that get filmed up here, they usually get cast out of out of the States anyway, or out of places like Vancouver or L.A. or, or Toronto. So, so being in Calgary, which is, uh, you know, I have a family here and my girlfriend has, has other kids, so I can't, I can't leave Calgary, you know, that's, that's another reason why, you know, stuck in the middle of somewhere, because I'm not necessarily stuck here, but, uh, you, you get, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> but, do you uh, think that sort of there will still be, well, options further open up, I mean, do you think acting will get bigger and bigger over time, sort of, as, as the internet becomes more viable and they realize there's a bigger audience out there? Yeah, I think so. I think a, a lot of, uh, a lot of money is going to be pumped into to web series now and uh, people creating their own content. Uh, one of the producers of Pure Onage is, is uh, now producing a, a web series. I can't remember uh, exactly what the, the name of it is, but uh, um, one of the, the actors from Kids in the Hall, which was a big, a big series here in Canada back in the 80s and 90s, um, he's involved in it and there's, uh, there's a whole fund now, government fund going towards, uh, developing new web series. So yeah, I think it's going to open it up a lot. And, uh, you know, right now there's, there, it's, it's hard. Like even, like I said before, being a lead on a, on a, on a TV series is great and all, but I, it still didn't give me the hours. And in terms of acting in, in Canada, there's a union, and uh you know a seniority and and shit like that and it's not always necessarily based on talent sure um another question i suppose that sort of ties into web series and you know getting your hours on everything like that was pure ownage the web series too was it ahead of its time basically i mean having a dedicated web series like that that popular as well or wasn't something i'd seen before would if pure ownage had a release say four or five years later do you think it would have done better off for it I think it would have done worse. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like because it was one of the first. I, I'm not saying that's one of the reasons why it was so big, but uh, it was definitely a pioneer, and and I really don't think it gets the recognition that it deserves, because it it was one of the first, if not the first, serial web series on on the net. You know, and yeah, it's a shame that. It, it never really did like it, it was huge with the fans and we had millions of fans all over the world but for some reason no one else would really take us seriously and that was always frustrating to us and uh we never we never could really grasp why even i mean i, I think there was a pretty i mean everyone knows it was a large audience of pure niche but was there always a thing of well it's not going to be big enough to draw attention from stuff like tv networks and things like that of course, the TV execs were always kind of skeptical, you know, would this niche market, um, you know, kind of catch on on TV? So it was a it was a tough haul uh, getting it on TV, and it was years and years of development and pitching and and hard work, you know. So towards the end of the web series, I mean, obviously. Uh having one of the crew members pass away uh, untimely did have an impact on it. But there did appear to be like a, a gradual slowdown and uh, between episodes. Did, did the crew sort of know that that was happening or did everyone just sort of lose steam? Um, I think it was, uh, you know, it was, it was one person's choice. After, after Troy had died, uh, Jeff chose to leave the web series and... Uh, to be honest, that's that's kind of when the end of the web series started happening. You know, you, you can't produce a show on your own. It's it's nearly impossible, especially when one of the other, the person that left is uh, one of the main actors. You know. Yeah. And is there? There's always been talks of episode 19 of the web series. Do you know what's going on at that? That's sort of the the hugest question on the forums at the moment. Yeah, um, I know it's been promised, and uh, it's, you know it, it. There's been stuff filmed. I, I've said it before many times that this one segment that I edited, I think, is gold. And uh, to be honest, I could, I think, it could be released on its own, and if not, be kind of a spin-off of Pure Onage, which uh, 
it's something that me and Jared have discussed, and uh, it's it's something we're kind of trying to work on. And you know, there's there's kind of other issues behind that that I can't really get into, but it's hopefully something we can do in the future. But in terms of episode 19, uh, really, I I wouldn't hold your breath in terms of it getting released. Um, and I know that's so hard to, to it's so hard to say, and it's it's probably even harder to hear. But at this point in time, uh, none of us even live in the same city. You know, uh, recently Jarrett has has left Toronto to go pursue uh, an acting career, and which I think is awesome. And, uh, you know, he's down in LA now pretty much. So, uh, you know, Jeff has shown no interest in continuing the web series and, uh, you know, it's hard. Uh, is it upsetting for you? I mean, obviously you didn't do any of the writing like you said, but is it upsetting for you to see the fan saying, you know, we want more, we love this series, but you know that it's unlikely for it to happen. It's incredibly upsetting. It's uh, it's incredibly frustrating, and I, I know I can speak for Jarrett when I when I say that. Say it, you know. He feels the same way. That uh, you know, it's sad to even think about. And there's a reason why, uh, you know, he doesn't go to there to the website anymore or on the forums because it's incredibly, you know, it's it's hard to to see and to know and uh, you know see the fans wanting to hear something and not knowing what to tell them it's it's difficult (laughs) and you know it's even more frustrating for me because it's it you know it's been something i've been was pushing for and pushing for and pushing for but i i have no control you know i like i i am just an actor i had no stakes in raffle male productions you know so was, it wasn't up to me, you know. There's also talk of uh, season two of the web series, although Davin mentioned that a couple of scripts were written and uh, Showcase didn't seem overly keen on them. Do you have any sort of updates on that? Uh, from what I can tell, I, you know, watching, uh, or not necessarily watching, but uh, seeing what uh, Showcase is, is putting on and uh, the direction they're going, uh, I don't see a season two happening. Um, they've, there, there's no comedy on Showcase anymore, and uh, you know they had a couple new. As far as I knew, as far as I know, uh, please don't quote me on this, but uh, I believe they had other comedies that they were going to air and have decided to to take the the network a different direction, and. Uh, you know, go the roots of these, I don't know, supernatural dramas and, and shit like that, stuff I'm not really interested in. Do so. you believe that, I mean, when I noticed that Twilight, I've never read the books, but when that uh, came out, there seemed to be, you know, so many rip-offs of it. Do you think that's happening with TV as well? One, one station comes up with an idea or a production yeah. company does, and then 50 other uh, rip-offs of it followed. Is that sort of bad for the industry because it doesn't give any chance for anything original to come out yeah i think it's horrible and uh i think more people should go along the lines of amc and they're putting out some amazing original content right now like uh walking dead yeah like walking dead like breaking bad like mad men those are all amc original series you know and they're all amazing and uh they're nothing like in on any other network and uh yeah like you see all these uh True Blood and and all these other vampire know, things. Yeah, vampire shit going on. <laughs> oh man, I'm so sick of it, and it's just saturated the whole, the whole you know business almost. It's almost ironic that these uh, vampires a series are actually truly sucking the life from originality. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's ironic, eh? Um, and someone asked the question. I I don't actually know much about this, but what is happening with law and some comics? Do are you able to answer that? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I would never suggest going into the comic uh, business unless you uh, have a big name to back you up. It is amazing how resistant the uh, comic book industry is to to new artists and new writers. Um, I've been ripped off so many times in terms of lore. I've lost so much money trying to produce it. It's been ridiculous. Like, given comic book stores 
copies and on their word that they're going to sell them and then you know once they sell them they'll take their cut and then call me up and give me what what i've earned you know and i've had places you know i've called them a couple months afterwards and they claim they've never heard of me and you know it's it's been that bad where people just like outright rip you off uh other people just not responding to emails like completely reluctant to want to support any kind of local uh, local artists or or anything it did it, it was it was shocking uh, to see to be honest how did uh law and some comics come about uh, was that sort of a bit of a project you thought hey I'd like to get involved with that or it's been something that uh, me and my buddy Jeff Hodgson who plays uh, death striker six 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 he uh, me and him have have written uh, countless countless uh scripts together uh you know short stories full feature films and uh we've always been fan of comics and one day we kind of just sat down and said you know what like we're gonna have to face the reality that we're most likely never gonna be able to make a lot of these films on our own so why don't we just try to use another medium to get these stories out there and so, uh, yeah, comics was a was a natural, natural thing for us to to look at and uh, to want to try to tackle. Is the produ- I mean, obviously, there's a huge production cost gap between making film and uh, comic. So, on that that sense, where you were saying before, people rip you off. Is it disheartening that something that is easy to produce at the same time they're not open to new ideas? Well, to be honest, it's it's actually not that cheap to produce uh, a comic. You know, I, I kind of went into this thinking, oh yeah, you know, we'll get an artist and you know we'll pay him what you know, a couple ten twenty bucks a page type of thing. And yeah, it, yeah it's not like that at all. To to get an artist, a, a good quality artist, you need to pay him a lot of money to you know sketch it out, and then there's coloring. And they charge more for that. And thankfully, we we got on we got hooked up with uh, Ian Navarro, who's a, a good buddy of mine. It's his cousin, so he he definitely didn't didn't uh, didn't rape us in terms of in terms of cost. But you know, there was one artist uh, that we did work with, and we worked several months with him, and uh, you know, sent him money, and then never heard from him again. So he basically yeah. stole the money. Yeah, stole the money, and uh, you know, and then printing costs uh, to print up a comic. You know, you can't just go and print a hundred copies of a comic. Uh, the cost for that is just is stupid. It's it's cheaper to to print out like a thousand copies. Buying them you know, in bulk, so, essentially. Uh, yeah, you have to buy in bulk, and to make it, you know, to even break even, you have to kind of dish out a lot of cash in order to get a good enough deal to not charge ten dollars for your comic you know is that you were saying before that no one's sort of susceptible to letting new people in is that the same as uh film now as well that everything is just saturated by the same stuff and there's no uh room for new ideas will that eventually just end up killing the market of either thing i don't know about film but uh tv for sure uh you know it's 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 amazing uh how many shows and actors just seem to get recycled and uh you know you see the same actor in so many different things and it's always the same actors just you know oh i've seen him in that show and i've seen him in that show and there's so many other talented people out there that don't seem to get the chance and i'm not just speaking about myself i've i know tons of great actors a lot of good buddies of mine that i've kind of met over the years now that uh, are just working their ass off, you know, and they're just not getting any recognition, and it's it's sad to see because they are amazing. Um, and so on the acting thing, a while ago I watched a video of yours. I believe it was like a, a highlight reel. It was a western theme thing. What was that for? Uh, that was just a demo reel. You know, that was just something trying to get my name out there, and uh, you know, it was those were scenes taken from other movies. Uh, it was nothing nothing specific for for anything yeah you know it's just uh that's what was suggested to do by my agent you know put a acting demo together and uh get your name out there was it helpful uh yeah i don't it's hard to say it it got me it got me a few gigs nothing nothing special but 
like I said, there's not really anything special going on up here in in, uh, in Canada unless you're kind of doing it on your own. Yeah. And whatever happened to Anastasia from the web series? I mean, obviously, Melanie, I, I'm unsure how to pronounce her last name, p- replaced the primary female character in the, the TV series. But was that uh, something that was discussed with Anastasia or did Showcase just not want her there? Uh, that was a network decision. I mean, uh, it was it was kind of hard fighting to get us as the actors. You know, it was it was tough um, making it so that me and Jarrett were were FBS Doug and, and Jeremy, and you know, trying to explain to them, you know, you can't change these characters. They're kind of already iconic characters in the gaming industry. You can't just put new actors in their place and expect people to be cool with it. Um, you know, that was a I mean, eventually they understood and saw saw why and definitely agreed with us. But when it came down to to actors that weren't necessarily main actors in the show, uh, like Miranda and like Dave, and not to say say Dave wasn't a main character, but it you know Dave didn't necessarily do much or say or say much, yeah. you know. And plus Dave had his own life and wasn't he, he had no interest in being on the T V show anyway. You know, he was he's was going to China and South Africa, so that wasn't even a possibility anyway. And was that sort of why was Showcase pushing so much to get all new actors in? What what was the reasoning behind that? That's uh that's the biz, man. Uh they don't necessarily want to give um a bunch of uh, guys that have no experience and, uh, you know, a a shot at what they, you know, like I said before, it's a union. And to give these guys, you know, us, uh, you know, main lead parts on a a TV series was kind of hard to justify to to a lot of people. And, uh, you know, I I can even recall uh, a time (laughs) when there was a scene where, me and Jarrett were uh, the the uh, club scene, and we're waiting outside the club, and the bouncer was uh, was letting us in. And uh, at one point, the director yells out after after one take, the director yells out, "Okay, back to ones." And this is one of the first days of, of shooting, and me, and me and Jarrett kind of just both look at each other, and we're just like, "What the, what the fuck? You know, what what does that mean? What what the fuck's back to ones?" And the look on this bouncer's face, who's you know who's been acting for years and years and been on lots of uh, Canadian shows, it was just looking at us like, "What the fuck? Yeah. Who are these two guys that are leading, you know, the lead actors in this show, and they don't even know what back to ones means, which is basic lingo in the acting world, I guess, you know." And so it's uh, kind of funny. Between TV and web, it, it, is there a, not a prejudice, I guess, is there a general distaste? I mean, if you said to someone, look, I was on this web series, it was immensely popular, do they discredit that? Is it, I suppose, do they see it as a way, well, if you didn't do TV, you didn't do anything? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, when I first tried to get an agent out in Toronto, uh, it was amazing. I would email people and uh, say, you know, I've been seen by by millions and millions of people and, and lots of people know who I am and what my name is and they were dying to talk to me but as soon as you mentioned you know like where have these people seen you what have you been in oh and it's oh this pure owner just web series what what do you mean web one like the internet <laughs> like yeah and it's like oh okay next yeah you know like all of a sudden there was no interest because to be honest even still there's not necessarily a lot of money in in that you know like just because six million people might have seen my face doesn't mean we made any money off of that you know what what does that translate into in terms of dollars is all they care about is which at the time doesn't didn't translate into any money i mean obviously tv is very commercial but does web have the sort of advantage to it that it's cheap i mean is it cheaper to produce a web series than it is to produce a fully fledged tv series yet still retain some amount of quality uh depends how you look at it i guess uh if you went the independent route you might be able to produce a cheap television series that is that is pretty decent but um in terms of you know we were known as as uh, a low budget show in the industry, 
and uh, it was stupid amounts of money <laughs> that were put into Pironage that were put into Pironage the way I see it and the way you know Jeff and Jared and we all saw it you know like we were, we were looking at it like holy shit we could do so much more with this money but uh, we're restricted was so obviously the show was all self-funded by the crew was it what the web series yeah the web series yeah that was pretty much all funded off of you know the uh, uh merchandise and and shit like that it uh sort of throughout the series as well um i don't know it was cool seeing the the change of from standard definition to the the hd camcorder was was the whole sort of crew happy to change that sort of go from using the the shitty old camcorder to going to hd was that sort of a a push in the right direction Oh, we were ecstatic about it. Uh, yeah, we, as as film buffs and as filmmakers, uh, we always wanted to get our hands on better equipment, you know. So, yeah, we thought that was uh, definitely in- instrumental in uh, increasing quality of pure ownage. And as well on pure ownage, um, obviously in the, the show you were bald, were you constantly shaving your head or was that a, a bald cap? No, that, that was me constantly shaving my head and... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's it's kind of, I I had uh, long hair down to my shoulders, like bleach blonde, total surfer kind of boy, <laughs> uh, right up until I was about 20. And then one of my good buddies got uh, testicular cancer. And so we all shaved our heads uh, in support of him. And ever since then, my head has been shaved. I just never have, have had the patience to grow it back. You know? <laughs> and at this point, I don't even think I could. Anything, long so wavy locks matter. down to your shoulders. Yeah, it was pretty crazy, man. Um, pretty crazy. Were you surfing a lot back then? Were you? <laughs> I was a big, uh, not necessarily surfing. I was into wakeboarding and uh, and uh, you know wake surfing and shit like that. You know, surfing behind a boat. I was huge into because obviously there's no no waves around uh, Calgary, Alberta. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it is sort of from your experiences at the start of the the web series to even to the end of the TV series? Can you see that you? have changed as both an actor and a person through the experiences? Yeah, I think both. Um, I, I'm definitely not the same person. Uh, definitely more aware and of a lot of things. But uh, I, I don't know if that's just life in general. Um, as an actor, uh, I think the TV series uh, had a lot to do with uh, me growing as an actor. And if you sort of could, would you have changed anything that you'd done throughout the web and TV series or has everything, you know, worked out for the best? Well, I mean, obviously not. I would love to see an end to the web series, you know, uh, an, uh, for some, some kind of finishing wraps on this thing or some kind of definite goodbye or, or something, you know, it's kind of sad to just leave this series the way it is and, um, you know, like I said, that's kind of that's kind of it. it yeah, I don't I don't know what to say anymore. It's <laughs> unfortunately uh, circumstances. You know, people are different, and people have uh, different views on uh, how things should work. And unfortunately, they sometimes don't work out. Yeah, sure. And what can we sort of? Ex- I want not we. Uh, what What are you expecting to do in the future? What what direction are you looking to take your acting career? Any you uh, pushing to get more and more stuff? Or? Uh, well, like I said, uh, I'm just going to keep trying to do uh, what I can out of Calgary. And, uh, you know, my agent is, uh, she knows the type of parts I want. And, you know, I don't expect to have a lot of professional gigs. You know, there's a lot of shit that I'm doing on my own, which I personally think is the route to go. Um, being a working actor is, is hard, hard as hell, especially with a family to support, you know, you can't just, uh, go to auditions whenever you want. You have to uh, find other means of, uh, making money. So, you know, it's, I've, I've got a short film that I wrote that is being produced this year. I've got a, a couple of great producers attached to that already. And, uh, one of them's actually, actually down in LA right now. Uh, shopping around to a couple directors and uh, you know we got a location out in Vancouver and uh, we're planning to shoot in uh, late spring so that's uh, 
look for that to hopefully be out sometime in, uh, you know, either late 2011 or early 2012. Do you have a name for this uh, short film? Uh, well, the tentative name for it, um, I, I mean, there's, we not necessarily sure where we want to take this film. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, discussions in terms of uh, what is the purpose um you know, so in terms of using it as a promotional tool for maybe something else in the future, like a series based off the film. Um, so right now, the uh, the title of the film is called Death of Gary Goldwater. And uh, it's, uh, it's about two hitmen that uh, keep killing the wrong guy. And uh, they're basically just two fuck-ups. And uh, yeah, it's a dark comedy. And it's hilarious. And I can't wait to make it. Uh, it's been something that uh, I've been looking forward to for, for quite a while now. So you've been working on that project for how long, roughly? Uh, well, me and the, the couple the couple of producers signed on about uh, six months ago, so we've kind of been working uh, pretty hard on, on pre-production right now in terms of uh, nailing down locations and actors and directors and, and shit like that. So... Yeah, once we get uh, all that in place, it uh, it'll be pro- pretty much full steam ahead from there. Sure. Well, I mean, we've we've really covered a lot, and I, I don't have uh, any other questions. Last, is there any? I suppose is there anything that you want to say directly to the community that will no doubt be listening to this? Um, keep listening to the podcast, and uh, you know, I'm still going to be putting out content. There's uh, other other short films and uh in terms of my background of the uh of the skit comedy troupe we had back here in calgary we're kind of uh getting that going again and we're starting a new series called uh the evils in advertising and uh that's you know, we're film uh we started filming last week so there's going to be a couple shorts that i'm going to be pumping out here pretty soon and uh another uh i've been pushing around this idea in terms of uh kind of a new series in t- in video games and I'm not really sure where I'm going to take it yet uh, the, all the Black Ops clips I've been I've been working on have kind of been an inspiration for me to, to do something new in, in that field and uh, I don't know, like I said uh, the whole FPS Doug and, Jer- and Jeremy thing, uh, that's still uh, a slight possibility that there might be a, a spin-off of some sort um, I'm still going to try to get the uh, the clip that I edited out there and uh, at Alive. least some kind of pure ownage uh, content, you know. And uh, other than that, um, yeah, the podcast uh, we're doing weekly, me and my buddy Derek, uh, that's been taking off. Uh, there's just, uh, yeah, I can't even explain how, how awesome that's been going. Uh, and we're getting a website up that up soon for that, so... And forums and all that kind of shit. So, I mean, it, the Pure Orange community, uh, I welcome you all to uh, come all over to the to the new one, the new community I want to build up of, of gamers and uh, cool-minded people, you know. So, hopefully we can start building up uh, building up something new. And, and yeah, uh, unique, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's the plans, man. All right, sweet. Well, uh, uh, yeah. The thanks to the fans and thanks for supporting me this last uh, little while. And uh, yeah, that's uh, all I can say is thanks. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for talking to me, Joel. It's been a really good, and no doubt we'll speak sometime uh, again in the future, both about your projects and you know just general life and everything like that. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot for talking to us. And uh, yeah, for sure, Bryce. It's been it's been awesome, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank all you. Right. Well, uh, thanks to the community for listening, and if you've got any questions, just post them up in the forum, and I'll get around to attend to